Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is multiplicity and the intermediate, intermediate value theorem. Okay, so um, what I would like you to do is to try this. It says to find the zeros and draw a sketch of the graph. All right, so put me on pause and then give it a try. Make sure you have your calculator. All right, so uh, it says to find the zeros. That means this has to be equal to zero, x plus 2 squared. So x plus 2 squared is really zero equals x plus 2 times x plus 2. So when I set them equal to 0 to get my zeros, I get x equals negative 2 and x is equal to negative 2. So notice I have the same, I have the same exact roots and right? I have equal roots. So on your graph, when you graph this, it'll look like this. At negative 2, it's tangent to the x-axis. There's only one root, only one zero. So right here, just put the graph is tangent to the x-axis. Now what I want you to notice is that, look at what this exponent is. This exponent is a two, means it's even. When you have an even exponent, this is what multiplicity is. When you have an even exponent, you will have a tangent graph at that zero. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. We have f of x is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 2. So 0 equals x plus 2 times x minus 2. So when I set them equal to 0, I get x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 2. So draw a sketch, you know, put it in your calculator. All right, so we have a 0 at negative 2 and a 0 at 2, so your graph looks something like this. Okay, so this, this graph crosses the x-axis two times. Now, look at my factors here. Your factors have an exponent here that's just not written, not written, and those exponents are 1 and 1. So these have odd exponents. So when the exponent is odd, the graph will cross the x-axis at those zeros. So let's put here the graph crosses the x-axis two times. Okay, so now let's just take a, this is a little information about the multiplicity. I'm just going to move everything up a little bit. Okay, so multiplicity. So you must be in factored form to figure out the multiplicity because you have to know what the exponent is. All right. So if the exponent of a factor is even, that's what we had in the first do now. I had an even exponent, right? That was like having x plus 2 squared, if it's square or 4. Your graph will be tangent to the x-axis, and it will be tangent at that 0. So in this case, my 0 was negative 2. So it's tangent at negative 2. And if your exponent is odd, so remember before I had um, just x plus 2, right? That exponent here really is a 1. So that's an odd exponent. Your graph will cross the x-axis at that 0. So my 0 here is at negative 2, so my graph will cross at negative 2. All right, so take a look at number 1 over here. And it says to factor, find the zeros and its multiplicity. All right, so... 0 is equal to, I'm going to factor, there's a GCF, the GCF is negative 2x squared times x squared minus 1. And then I can factor x squared minus 1. So this is negative 2x squared times x plus 1, x minus 1. So I have three factors here. There's a factor here and there's a factor here. Okay, so whatever this 0 is, it's going to be tangent because my exponent is odd. Whatever my zero is here and here, my graph is going to, whatever my exponent, my exponents here are odd, right, because they have really an exponent of one. So that means at my zeros, my graph is going to cross at the zeros here. So my zeros here is x is equal to zero, my x is equal to negative one, and x is equal to one. Okay, so what we would write for the first one, for this guy here, all right, we would write, uh, so put here, exponent is even, so it's tangent. And how you would write the multiplicity is like this. Um, at x equals 0, the multiplicity is 
is even. So you would write f of x, that's your y value, is tangent to the x-axis at x is equal to 0. All right, so now let's take a look at the other ones here. So notice that my, my exponents here, they were 1s here, so that means they're odd. So let's put here exponent is odd. When your exponent is odd, it, it, it will cross x-axis. All right, so let's write down the multiplicity. So at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1, the multiplicity is odd. So f of x crosses the x-axis. It says x-axis at x equals negative 1 and x is equal to 1. So the reason why we want to know this is so that we can actually draw a sketch of the graph without actually graphing it. All right, so let's, let's try that now. Let's actually graph this. We're going to graph this guy without actually plugging it into the calculator. All right, so I'm just going to move everything up a little bit. So to graph without without graphing uh, it on the graphing calculator, the first thing you want to do is you want to do the leading coefficient test to find the end behavior here. So you got to find the degree. So let's first find that. So I'm doing this for, just going to move it up a little bit more. All right, so I'm working with f of x. I'm going to graph this equals negative 2x to the fourth plus 2x squared. All right, so the first thing I want is the degree. The degree, remember, is its largest exponent. In this case, it's 4, so that means it's even. So remember, when it's even, it'll either go up, up, or my graph will go down, down. So now what you look at is the leading coefficient. My leading coefficient is negative 2, which means it's negative. And when it's negative, my graph will go down, down. All right, so that's the first thing we need to know. Next thing we need is the, we need the multiplicity. Okay, so my multiplicity is at x equals 0, it's an even multiplicity. And what does it do here? It's tangent. And so it's basically what I wrote up here, tangent at x equals 0. And at x equals negative 1 and x is equal to 1, so for both of these here, it's an odd multiplicity. So it crosses at x equals negative 1 and x is equal to 1. So now let's graph this, which is just a sketch of the graph, so we can know what it looks like. So I know it's going to be, um, it's going to be a down, down, right? so it's going to be down like this, okay? Uh, let's put our zero, so I have a zero at zero, at one, and at negative one. So it has to cross these, it has to cross at each one of these places. Now since it's going down here, I know it's going to have to cross this way, and it's coming down over here, it's coming down over here in quadrant uh, four, so that means it has to go this way. So that means, and I need another cross at zero. Oh, sorry, not across at zero, it's tangent at zero. So if they're both pointing up here, that means it's going to have to be tangent like this. So my graph will look like this. Okay, all right, so let's try another one. So flip it over. Okay, so let's take a look at two. I have f of x is equal to x squared minus uh, x to the third minus x squared minus 2x. So the first thing is I'm going to find my zeros so I can find my multiplicity. So zero is equal to x to the third minus x squared minus 2x. So there is a GCF. The GCF is x. So it's x times x squared minus x minus 2. And then I can factor that, and that becomes x minus 2, x plus 1 equals zero. All right, so I get x equals 0, x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to 1. Okay, so now notice 
My factor here has an odd exponent, it's one. Odd exponent, odd exponent. So at all three of these zeros, it's going to cross the x-axis. So that's my multiplicity. So let's write that down. So that's the first, one of the first things. At x equals zero, x equals negative two, and x is equal to one, the multiplicity is odd. Okay, so then what does that mean? So that means f of x, your graph, your y values, will cross the x-axis at x equals 0, x equals negative 2, and x is equal to 1. All right, now I need the leading coefficient test. All right, so what is the degree of my polynomial? The degree of my polynomial is 3, which means it's odd. So when it's odd, remember it's going to go up, down like this, or up like this and down that way, depending on what we have. So let me fix that. Okay, so it'll be one of those. Oh, so you look at the leading coefficient. So my leading coefficient is positive. It's a positive 1, which means it's going to go up to the right and down to the left. Okay, so when you graph, so like I said, it's going to go up to the right and down to the left. All right, so now put your zeros down. So my zeros are at 0, negative 2, and 1. So they're going to cross at each place. So it's going to has to cross here, right, because it's coming down into quadrant 3. So it's going to be across here. It's got to go up into quadrant 1, so it's going to cross at 1 this way. So now how am I going to get from negative 2 to 1? So which way is it going to cross at 0? Is it going to cross this way or this way? So it has to obviously cross this way. So it'll be this way. So my graph will look like this. And then I'll have to come back up to go that way. Okay, so let's try number 3. I'm just going to move everything out of the way. Okay, so the first thing is I'm going to find my zero. So zero is equal to 8x squared minus 2x to the fourth. So there is a GCF. GCF is uh, 2x squared times 2, sorry, 4 minus x squared. And then I can factor that. So it's 2 plus x, 2 minus x. And 2x squared. Okay, so let's find our zeros here. So I'll have a zero at x equals zero. A zero to x is equal to negative two, and x is equal to positive two. All right, so let's see. Notice here my exponent is uh, even, so that means it's going to be tangent here. My exponents here are odd, that means it's going to cross here. So let's write down the multiplicity. So at x equals zero, the multiplicity is even. So f of x is tangent at x equals 0. At x equals negative 2 and x equals 2, the multiplicity is odd. So f of x crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 2 and x is equal to 2. All right, so that's the first thing. We need the leading coefficient test. All right, so the degree is actually 4. That's my largest exponent, which means it's even, right, which means it has to go up, up, or it has to go down, down. So my leading coefficient is actually negative 2, so it's negative. So since it's negative, it's going to go down, down. Okay, so let's draw a picture over here. So I have x, y. So I just said it's going to be down, down. Okay, so put your zeros down. So I have a 0 at 0, a 0 at 2, and a 0 at negative 2. Okay, so at 0, it's going to be tangent, and at negative 2 and 2, it's going to cross. So if it's going down in quadrant 3, it has to cross at negative 2, so that's going to go up like this. And same, same thing over here. It's going to come down, so it's going to have to cross this way here. Now, how am I going to get from 
here to here and be tangent here. So that means it's going to have to be concave up here. So your graph will look like this. Okay, so one more thing to talk about, and that's the intermediate value theorem. Okay, and that's super easy. All right, so the intermediate value theorem says the, it's the x interval in which you would find a zero. So look at this table of values. It's just a made-up table of values. It says in which in what interval of one unit, so you can only be one unit apart from each other, right? so you can't go from uh, negative three to positive one, all right, will you find a zero? So look in, the, look in the y column, and notice I have a sign change from zero to five here. That means there has to be some zero in here. There has to be some x that's going to give me a zero. right? So just put an arrow there and put here, there must be a zero here. So that means for some value of x in this interval, there must be a zero. So for some x value between negative 2 and negative 1, there is a zero. Okay, and notice there's a sign change here. So there must be a zero here, and that would be for some x value in between 0 and 1. So let's write over here. In the one unit interval, negative 2, negative 1, and 0, 1, there exists a 0. Okay, and last thing. Last one. So now just using it from the graph. So it says to sketch a graph of this here, so you're going to use your calculator and use the intermediate value, using the intermediate value theorem. All right, so, so draw a sketch of the graph. So your sketch looks something like this. There's a one and it's like six here. And it kind of goes up and then it comes back down kind of like that. So I know when I make my table of values, so you're going to make a table of values. And I know that I'm probably going to have to be between zero and seven over here. So let's go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So look at your table of values, get your uh, y values. So this is negative 5, 1, 5, 7, 7, 5, 1, negative 5. Okay, so you're looking for a sign change in the y value. So there's a sign change here, so that means there's a 0 here in between. All right, so I need, this is my interval. And... In between negative one, uh, one and five, there has to be a zero. Okay, so that's the interval. So, okay, so let's write that down. In the one unit interval, in the one unit interval, right, so it's only one unit because it's going from zero to one, that's one unit, and from six to seven, that's one unit, there exists a zero. So which means that, I'm just going to move this graph here, I'm just going to move that graph. So like when I wanted to graph this, that I know that there's a zero, because this is not, this is not factorable. So in order to graph it, I know that I have a zero between zero and one and six and seven. So in between them, so it has to heat be here and here, and my my degree is um, neg uh, even, so that means it has to go up, up, or down, down, and it's a leading coefficient is negative, so it has to go down like this. So that means it's going to come up here, come around, and then go back down. Okay, so that's it, and we'll practice in class tomorrow. Have a good night.